is that, um, wow, hey, hey, Canada, hey, hey, join, thank you. I hope you're from Canada. I, we got some good friends up in uh, Montreal and also in Toronto, if that's where you're from. All right, but listen to this. When the Lord turned again, hey, hello, the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. This is Psalm 126. Oh, near Toronto. Great. Great city. You know, I'd like to get up there and see, see some things. Okay. Then verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the Gentiles or the unsaved, the Lord has done great things for them. Now, this is amazing, amazing verse and, and uh, amazing portion on two accounts. Number one, that God is in the business of turning, turning one's captivity. And, you know, th this is the thing, you know, being caught captive is not something you necessarily walk into. Um, there is an active, organic, systematic, persistent um, uh, surveillance kind of uh, the cosmic system is is dealing with humanity hey pastor Kim is dealing with humanity dealing particularly with believers and particularly precisely with believers who are Bible believers like you and here's the thing that uh, that there's a captivity that can happen I can get captive by my negative thinking. I can get captive by a bad situation. I could go negative in my emotions because of the wrong stimuli, carnal stimulization that happens. It can happen to any of us, I'm just saying. But here's the beauty, is that God turns our captivity. And uh, this is the amazing thing because in Jeremiah 33, verse 11. Hey, Donald, Donald, you're way down in... Are you in South America? I think he is. You know, give me a yay or a nay on that, or, or at least tell me where you are. But Jeremiah 33, 11, uh, God has turned the captivity of his people again and again. And this is what it says. Uh, For I will cause to return the captivity of the Lamb as at the first saith the Lord. And then it says in the A part that the voice of joy and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts for the Lord is good for his mercy endures forever. And that is amazing because what has happened in our hearts and what has happened uh, for us by Jesus Christ is number one, he has turned our captivity he has released the prisoners. You know when Jesus Christ, in Luke chapter 4, and he opened the scroll as it was his opportunity to read from the scriptures. And, uh, and so he reads, he reads out of Isaiah how that the Lord has anointed him. Now, the anointing comes on him, and he's been anointed to release the captives. This is one of the things that, that he's done. But he doesn't do that just during his earthly ministry. By reason of his ascension and session, and this is something that we're teaching in our Survey of Doctrine course, that the ascension going up through the atmosphere, up through the demonic layer of the first heaven, and then being seated, session, at the right hand of the Father, and from that position of advantage, he now ever lives to make intercession for us. And he does the releasing from a finished work accomplishment. And in John 19, 30, all that was necessary was fulfilled and accomplished at Calvary. But now we have to include, and this is important, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his session, all of that makes for the finished work of Jesus Christ accomplished on behalf of every believer. 68 things at the point of salvation occurred. Actually, 90, 96 things, but 68 things are, are uh, positional, and the balance of those are experiential. Well, now, this joy, this uh, 
mouth filled with laughter <laughs> and our tongue with singing because God has done something. God has done something. And, um, and this is the great privilege that we have as believers. Uh, Job 8.21 says this. I thought this was such a great verse. It says, Till he fill your mouth with laughing and lips with rejoicing. You know what this is? You know, we said in the morning devotional, enjoy God. Enjoy the Lord. And I mean, it's like because of all of the benefits, the Bible says he daily he daily loads us with benefits. So Arnold, you got some benefits yesterday, but you got some brand new benefits along with the rest of us today. And that's amazing. That's amazing because why? Here's, here's the critical thing. I think of this, why we should enjoy Jesus Christ, why we should enjoy our fellowship, why we should enjoy our communion through the Holy Spirit. Because it says, that they said among the unsaved and uh, the Gentiles, the those that don't know Christ, this is what they said. They said, the Lord has done great things for them. You know, that's an amazing witness. You know, when you're walking around and, and you're released from your past, you're released from, from a sin consciousness. That's why in 1 John 1, 7, we walk in the light as he is in the light and uh, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ it says keeps on cleansing me from my conscience and from a consciousness of sin to a consciousness of redemption to a consciousness of mercy to a consciousness of joy and so i i can enjoy my fellowship. I've been brought into union with Jesus Christ so that I can have a communion with Jesus Christ. And when I have this communion, then my soul is responding to divine initiations. My attitude has been turned from self-orientation to divine orientation by the grace of God. And I begin to walk in the truth and the light of who Christ has made me to be. And right away, and I, even now, even now hey howie wow man i love you miss you sir and even now there's a reason why i can have joy and it's not because of the things that happen in my external because that's i'm looking in the wrong place the joy of the lord nehemiah 8 10 that you know gives me strength is rooted you read it in that chapter is rooted in Ge nehemiah 8 8 where they opened the book they opened the Bible and from there they it says and they gave they gave the sense the sense of what was saying and the sense of of course is that behind the Word of God stands a loving merciful gracious uh, life quickening Jesus Christ who becomes our life he becomes the substance and the anchor for our soul so we have a security apart and separate from this world system well when you live like that when we live like that when we enjoy that enjoy it into joy we enter into the joy of that then guess what people are looking at your life they're looking at a person who has an incredible relaxed mental attitude let me tell you this the world is so uptight the world is an uptight place if you think about the things that are happening across this world and that's why I, I don't I don't indulge in the in the six o'clock or ten o'clock news, because I, one time I was I, I, you know my mother-in-law was over the house she wanted to see the news she turned that thing on man in five minutes I'm like oh my goodness you know like crazy place <laughs> now I'm not sticking my head in the sand making believe like that stuff is not happening more importantly I'm understanding what God is doing because you know what. I could look at all those things and say, where's the Lord? Where is the Lord? But if I know where he is and I know where I can find him in fellowship and communion, plus with the body of Christ and all the great things, we get reports every day. Donald is down. In, Donald, where are you? Tell You might have posted it, but I didn't see it. But see, we got young people, old people too. Hey? We got other people all over the world getting firsthand, face-to-face, person-to-person, accounts <laughs> yeah not a fan of news either still in Baltimore oh okay I thought you hit the road I had you out of town 
and uh, South America. Leaving soon, okay. Hey, Canada's 36 years young. I like that. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I'm still thinking redemptively. Think redemptively and you're thinking young. Now, this is amazing. So our mouth filled with laughter, with laughter. Not because we're joking about life. Life is a serious deal. But we have, we have a, a reason to be alive. We have, we have a fulfill. We're fulfilled in life because of Christ in us. The Bible says the hope of glory. The hope of glory. And the word hope is one of the strongest words in the New Testament for confidence, for assurance, and for reliance on the on the grace of God. Now I want to close with this. Um, <laughs> this is amazing. You know, uh, Nehemiah 6.16, and it says, And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Hey, L. Jaker, thanks for joining. You know, when God is working in, in our lives, it is God that's doing the work. We're not working for Him. He's working in us and for us and through us. You know what? People see that. And they may not, you know, they may not connect all the dots. But they realize there's something going on in your life. And listen, that's the great platform for sharing the hope. This is what the Word of God says. It says that we are to give an account for the hope that is within us. Yeah, amen. Vessels, his living temple. That's exactly correct. Because, you know, the only way people are not going to get, you know, God from looking at the trees. You know, this is a beautiful day today, and I thank God for that. But, you know, nature doesn't bear witness. It only It's only his fingertips. I had people say, why are you so happy? How do you do it? It's Jesus. That's right. That's so good, man. You got it. This is what we're talking about. And listen, fight negativity. I mean, fight it in the sense with the word. Resist the temptation to be in your temperament. My temperament, your temperament might be melancholic. It might be, you know, sanguine. It might be like subdued. You know, and when a person says, you know, well, I'm not an outgoing person. What does that mean? You know, it's not that you are an outgoing person. It's that what's coming out of you is worth the goodness of God. Okay. Now, I said this, we're going to do a little bit different here and you got to participate. So listen very carefully. Okay. So when it says in Psalm 126, 2, where we started, this then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Now I'm going to ask you, I want you to post it right down here. Just, you know, post it right down here. Your comment. What, what gospel song comes to your mind right off the top of your head that blesses you? That really blesses you. You know, like you can just think of that song and and it ministers. You even thinking about it. You don't have to sing it. We're not going to sing here. But you're thinking about it. What song gets in your it's in the garden? Man, that's so good. Hey, hey, Ken. Blessed assurance. Yes, Jesus is mine. Highest praise. Okay, that's so good. You guys, you know what? And look at these songs. Anyone else? Look at these songs. We have been given an amazing heritage. I think of it in terms of the music that, that we sing. And, and I just want to say this. You know, other religions, religions now, other religions have music, but they don't have praise. They don't have praise. You want to know why? Because true praise is a result of true worship. Spirit Breakout, love this one too. Yeah, that's great, hey, hey, Canada. True praise, listen to this carefully, because it's, you know, praise is not saying, praise, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise comes out of something, out of what? A reflection and meditation and setting the Lord before our face. You know, having communion. Yes, it ushers in the presence of God. That's absolutely true. But the presence is where? It's in you. The presence of God is in us. The kingdom of God, the Bible says, is within us. But the beauty is this. When I meditate and muse on the word of God, and I am reflecting on who Christ has made me to be, I'm reflecting on the reality that God does not, in Psalm 32, impute my sins to me or iniquity. 
that I am free by reason of John 8, 31, 32, that the, I will know the truth and the truth will make me free. Not free to do, listen, not free to do anything I want to do, but free to serve God without fear. Man, that's so good because I want to serve God. But many times people are so afraid of their inconsistency, so afraid of their, their failure that they don't rebound, they don't get back in the game, and, and, and they withdraw and get abstract. But listen, you don't have to do that. Listen, we can enter his courts, courts with thanksgiving, enter, his, enter the gates with thanksgiving, his courts with what? Praise. So listen, I'm finished. But thank you for suggesting those songs. And, and it's amazing that our life and in Christ Jesus, when it's experienced in the, in the fullness of the Spirit, and I'm not talking about an experience, I'm talking about a life, when the Holy Spirit is in charge. Did, did I have lunch, sir? No, not yet. It's a little earlier here, okay? But when I can live that way, when I can live that way, guarantee you, guarantee you that people will look upon your life and they'll say, man, that guy, that person, that individual has something because he lives, I can face tomorrow. See, Joanne, you got me singing here. Well, that's amazing. I just want to, you know, just thank God for you and each of you for, for tuning in and being faithful. And, uh, you know, during this week, we've had a great week. Pray for, for our class tonight. Every Thursday night, we survey of doctrine. We've got almost almost 80 students in the class. And these are the game changers. These individuals, both young and old, they are gonna, they're going to turn the world <laughs> upside down or whatever, right side up again, you know. And we have the privilege of, of investing the Word of God in them every Thursday. And uh, a lot of other things are happening, but thanks so much for being with us this week and and i think you know thursdays uh, we can we can do this we can get your participation and i like that don't want to stay too long god bless you until next week and uh tuesday we'll begin uh we'll have a broadcast at 10 30 uh eastern standard time arnold have an amazing weekend we're praying for you sir and uh thanks so much for joining with us god bless you till next time